So today we're going to talk about multiplying and dividing decimals, which we talked about was going to make sense because we did comparing, adding, subtracting, now multiplying and dividing would make sense that that's the next operations that we're going to work with. So let's just take a look at this example. We all want to make money. And when we're dealing with money, we obviously have the decimals. So let's say you work for your neighbors washing cars over the weekend. You get paid $5.50 per car and you ended up washing eight cars. How much did you make? Now, remember, we want to think about that reasonable answer. So let's just round that 550 to 6. 8 times 6, 48 should be around there. Probably, obviously, a little bit less because we rounded up. So let's just see how we would multiply that. And again, most of you probably already know this, and I'm just showing you one of these examples before we start showing you the negatives. So 550. Now, I don't have to put the zero here if I don't want to, but since I have it in the problem, I'll go ahead and just put that there. Again, it's kind of just extra work. 8 times 0 is 0. 8 times 5 is 40. 8 times 5 is 40 plus the 4, 44. Now, if I left it like this, did I make $4,400? Yeah, no. Did I make $440? No, nope. what about $44? That sounds about right, so my decimal place goes there. But notice if I would have put my decimal place here, $4, that wouldn't have made sense. So our reasonable answer told us we needed to have the decimal right here. Another way to do that is to count. Go one, two. There were two spaces that I had behind the decimal, and I need to go one, two. But I really just like to think about what a reasonable answer is, especially with multiplication, and that, that's pretty much your clue. So write down these steps, calm down, and pause the screen, and we'll talk about this. So step one says, think of your war, what's a reasonable answer? You multiply your decimals as you do with your whole numbers, and then you place the decimal point now remember, we need to place it, the number of decimal places in the product, which was our final answer, is the total number of decimal places in the factors, which are the numbers that we multiply by. And then step four, again, you're in seventh grade, so you get those negative numbers, and you need to use the same rules for multiplying positive and negative integers. So let's just take a look at this next example. And again, this is written horizontally, and we tend to do the math vertically, which is totally fine. So, now again, multiply decimals as you do whole numbers. So I'm not even really paying attention right now to the decimals, but let's just think about what a reasonable answer is. If I rounded this to 7 and this to 2, should be around 14. So let's, that'll be our goal. 1 times 9 is 9, 1 times 3 is 3, and 7, I'm going to add my 0 for my place value, 2 times 9 is 18, 2 times 3 is 6, add the 7, and then 2 times 7, or sorry, 2 times 7 is 14. I'm running out of space, so I'm just going to write the final answer here. So I'm going to have 9, 9, plus 0 is 9, 8 plus 3, 11, carry the 1 here, 7 plus 7 is 14, 15, carry the 1, and get a 5, and a 1. Now again, if I left this right here, not a reasonable answer, okay? If I put my decimal here, 1,551, not reasonable, because our goal was to be around 14. So a reasonable place to put our final answer is right here. If I was to look right here, one, two, three decimal places in the factors. So I have to go to one, two, three here. Let me just rewrite. 
So here are a couple more that I want you to practice with. Again, notice that the, we have our negative number. Um, if you want to, you could just put your answer as a negative because a negative times a positive is a negative. So we use our sleeping integer man, our MD. It's a little bow tie. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and multiply this just like I normally would. 3.2 times 4.15 or 4 and 15 hundredths. I'm going to pretend that the decimal is not there, but before that, I'm going to find my reasonable answer. Oh, 4 times 3 is 12. should be around there. 2 times 5 is 10. 2, 3, 8. That's it. 0 for the place value. 3 times 5 is 15. Carry the 1. So 3 and 4. 3 times 4 is 12. And then I add them up. So 5, 6, 7, 8, 12, 13, and 1. So again, know I need to be around 12, but if you want to, so you know your place value is going to go right here. But if you want to count, you can. 1, 2, and then 3. So I go one, two, three. But again, just think about the reasonable answer and you don't have to worry so much about counting in the factors. Okay, and so some of the feedback that I got is that we should do some more practice. So I wanna do um, some more. So here we go. Again, a negative times a negative is going to give us a, if I covered up his eyes, that would leave us with a positive. Now I'm going to go ahead, so here we go. And here, since they both have three digits in it, I'm just going to put this one on top. Now this one's an interesting one because this is smaller than one. So we're taking one and we're going to get a smaller portion of it. So kind of like when we multiply by a fraction, we're going to get a smaller number. So let's see what we get. Four times three is 12. Four times one is four plus the one is five and four. Now let's count our decimal places. One, two, three, four. Oh, I got four, so I gotta go one, two, three. Oops, I gotta go one more though, so I have to add a zero and then put my decimal there. Okay, so again, whenever, if you need it to move four and you only have the three digits here, you need to add another digit and put the zero there. And that makes sense because we knew we were gonna get something smaller than this one because we're taking a fraction of it. Okay, so when we're dividing, um, I like to say that the person knocking at the door cannot have a decimal in it. So the way I would write this if you wanted to is the fraction, so you could think of top dog in the house, is 1.6 is being divided by 0 0.04 which looks kind of weird, you're like, how did the decimal get in that fraction? But remember, this is the division sign. So 1.6 divided by 0 0.04. We can't have this decimal here, so I need to move it. And how I can move it is if every time I multiply by a 10, let's say if I was to multiply five by 10, that gives me 50. If I multiplied 50 by 10, that gives me 500. So notice what's happening is every time I multiply by 10, my I'm adding a zero. Okay, so let's get this guy out of here. So I need to move this decimal two places to the right. So technically what I'm doing is I'm multiplying this by 100, and if I'm gonna multiply this by 100, I have to multiply the top by 100. But we like to just say, okay, well, I'm gonna move this decimal over twice, and then I'm gonna move this decimal over twice as well. There's an empty space, so I have to add a zero. Okay, so this becomes, if I was to multiply by the copycat, this would be 160 over four. 
Trust me, these would be equivalent. <clears throat> so 4 goes into 16 4 times. 4 times 4 is 16 and 0, 0. So I have 40. So this is going to equal 40. Okay, and so here are the steps. I, I kind of went through it. Hopefully it's refreshing your memory. What makes it seventh grade? Yes, you get those deaths or those negatives. But let me just write out the steps for you. Pause the screen and then we'll just get practicing. Okay, so the first thing again, you're going to think of your WARA. You need to have the number you are dividing by has to be a whole number which we just showed moving. So we have to move the decimal place over to the right as needed. And that goes for both numbers. And we use our dividing integer rules. So let's just look at this one. This is 13 divided by 65 hundredths. So I need to move this decimal place over to the right. So every time I multiply by a 10, it moves it over 1. So I'm going to have to multiply by 10 times 10, which is 100. So 1 2, and then I have to multiply this by 2, 1, 2. And remember, there's always a decimal there. We just don't show it unless we need it. So I'm just going to rewrite this over here as 65 divided by, or sorry, 1300 divided by 65. Going to 13, so I have to look at 130. I know 60 times 2 is 120. Oh, so then 5 plus 5 is 10. So 120 plus 10 would give us, so I know that that's going to be 20. Or sorry, 2. And that gives me 130. 0 is our final answer. And again, it's kind of weird when you're dividing and you're thinking, okay, how did I get a bigger number? Well, you're taking something and you're making it into small, small sections. So how many of those small sections do you have? You have 20 of them. Okay, so here's your examples with negatives. Here we go. So we're going to use our sleeping integer man. So this is going to be a negative divided by a negative, which is a positive. So I'm just going to put that off to the side right now. And then I have 5 and 35 hundredths divided by 2 and 5 tenths. So I need to get this guy out of here. We don't like it here. So I'm going to move this over 1. Move this over 1. I'm just going to rewrite it over 